Eric Mystery. Eric Mystery. So, the first, the first of our wonderful poets for this half of the evening. Now, I asked people to give me some little things about themselves. And our first poet uh, would like you to know that she's a huge fan of the Cumberland Arms, so she is delighted to be here tonight. We all huge fans of the Cumberland? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Good, okay, we're in good company. You already have a rapport with our first poet. There you go, something in common. Um, she also would like you to know that uh, she's not exactly a virgin to performing, but she's not a tantric expert either. She's just she's kind of at the hand of the t-shirt fumbling stage with it. So that's all good. And um, lesbian, vegetarian, mountain climber. One of these is not true. <laughs> I wouldn't like to say. But what I would like to say is please give her an enormous round of applause to welcome to the stage Judy Jackson. <laughs> Never been up a mountain. <laughs> <coughs> been up a few t-shirts. <laughs> um, thank you for um, your time, everybody. Okay, this this first one's called "Nothing Behind the Hair." To find my very own Keats or Rossetti, my goal, a poet, a painter, a sensitive soul, pensive, dynamic with a creative flair, I was lured by your hair. <laughs> Did those curls conceal my very own Nietzsche or mysterious Heathcliff with dark features? Someone with whom to share my genes, to live a life of daring and extremes. But this was not to be. This was not to be. Instead, I find, to my deep despair, there was nothing behind the hair. An ordinary man with an ordinary mind, a bald man waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be fooled by youth's beauty mask. It is fleeting, ephemeral, it will pass. Seek true beauty in bones, in eyes, in soul and core. Seek your true love and love her deeply and evermore. Thank you. Thank you. So that was my coming out poem, really. And uh, one of the first things that people ask me, I don't know if this is the same for other people, when you say, oh, I'm a lesbian, one of the things people often say is, so, what do you do? <laughs> so, uh, this poem might answer some of the questions. <laughs> we'll see. It's called, The Tricks of Your Trade. How I love the tricks of your trade. The wonderful ones of my handmaid. One, two, three, four's enough. Magic fingers, wrist and cuff, counting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then I let go again. Why did you let it go? Because you manipulate your fingers so. 
what you do, you do so well, my delicious, dexterous, sapphic bell. O oh, mistress, so exquisitely equipped, your devoted apprentice, I am truly gripped. Pray, teach new tricks to this old bitch. I'm desperate for my digital switch. <laughs> How I desire the tricks of your trade, the wonderful ones for my handmaid. Without tongues, but that's another one. <laughs> so we've had a bit about the ecstasy, and now a bit more about the agony. So this one is a bit, it's a kind of about a time when I was struggling, but trying to keep up appearances. And it's called, I'm not on top of the socks. I'm not on top of the socks. I cannot manage to match pairs. A blue striped top with a red, a subtle sign of floundering. Mostly I can manage to keep them clean and cook for them and cuddle. Mostly I can read to them and get them to places on time. But the socks suffer and show my shame, my weaknesses, writ large. I'm not on top of the socks. It's the small things I let slip, like smiling and singing homemade songs of affection and intimacy. I'm not on top of the socks. I cannot pull them up. But I have hope cling on to that day when the clouds will lift and the crowds will part and the path will be clear and there'll be matching socks on feet and a new song in my heart. <laughs> the second from last and it's about neither living in the past nor living in the future but trying to live in the present and kind of from stepping out from behind the camera all the time to try and come in front of it a bit more and it's called the archivist basement cave eight long years ago airlocked Humidity, control, close stacked shelves, stores and smothers, manuscripts document the lives of others. Beneath glass, dark wood framed, nestled objects, ordered and named, between leather bound, hand stitched spines, gloved finger traces inked scrawled lines opening the curious cabinet wood sticks metal clinks gurgling stomach breath quick she parts the pages of a faded book this is where I come from look her home a micro museum of photos and tat, collector's proof. I was there, we did that. The years have since passed like streams of cars. She smashes the glass, cracks the spine, drinks from the vase. She parts the pages, turns over a new leaf. She does not have to snap and store. To her relief, she will not record, retell and archive, but play and take part 
and thrive. Thank you. Yeah. So we started off with a bit of sex, let's come back to a bit of sex, it also <laughs> So, this is called Rooting for You. With you, it's all carrot and no stick. <laughs> Nourishing, orange, rooted, versus inedible, grey, rutted, enticing, encouraging, desired versus limiting, sanctioning, dreaded, succulent, smooth, a probe versus gnarled, thorny, a prop. Two phalluses, but which to fuck? I know which one I pick with me. It's all carrot and no dick. <laughs> <laughs>